Hello, avid readers of Christian fiction. It's Trisha Goyer here again, and I'm here with Mike House. So welcome, Mike. It's so glad. I'm so glad to have you here again. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here again. It's great. Always great connecting with you. I always love reading your books. So this is super fun. Now, we're going to be talking mostly today about mm -hmm. um, the Barabbas legacy, but this is a part of a three book series. So yes. I wanted to show them when we get started. Um, I was called Barabbas and then Pillars of Barabbas. And then we have the Barabbas legacy. Um, and for those who maybe haven't seen the first interview, um, and maybe some even are like, who's Barabbas? Like, what, <laughs> what is this about? Explain a little bit about the yeah. stories and then why sure. you wanted to write them. Yeah, well, I'll take a, a, a little bit of a step back. I always wanted to be a writer. So in college, I thought I, I would like to write. And then I chickened out and I chose oh. a different career because I thought, well, I need to get a stable job and be able to support a family and those good things. And so I picked a different career and did that for 25 years. And I thought I would eventually write science fiction. And I did a little bit. I, and I, mm -hmm. I published a science fiction novel and <clears throat> never thought I would write biblical fiction. That was never in the cards. <laughs> And then I started thinking about just several years ago, I started thinking about this scene as I was rereading it mm. with Barabbas and Pilate and Jesus and, and the Jews. And, and Luke says it was it was the Jewish leaders. It wasn't just the common rabble, if you will. Right. It was it was the, the upper class and they were yeah. the ones that were present and they were the ones clamoring for Jesus's death. And I thought, wow, what, an, what a fascinating scene. And what must Barabbas have been thinking? And I'm not the first person to have had those thoughts. And I'm not the first person to have written them down either. But I decided I was going to do it. And then I did a book and had a lot of fun doing it. It was really educational for me to do the research and to think through all of those things. And then there was a second book in there. And so I started working on a second book. And, I, and then I thought uh, after the second book, there's a third. And originally I was going to publish that this year at about this time. And I ended up getting it done in December. So earlier. And boy, it was a lot of fun to do that capstone and, and travel all over the place and do more research and visit places like Armenia, mm -hmm. Northeastern Africa again, of course, Rome, Britannia this time, uh, Spain this time. Uh, a lot of a lot of really fun things. Uh, so I had a lot of a lot of fun doing it. But Barabbas is a really interesting character to think about, and and Paul is his mentor, and they have a lot in common, yeah. right? Paul was a vile sinner, and a very proud man, and then he repented. Now he he received that singular vision, right? And he had a choice. He could have rejected it. After the vision, he could have, because Christ doesn't force anybody to follow, right. give us a warning like that, but he doesn't force anybody. And Paul chose to follow him. What an amazing story Paul is too. So, so weaving those two together was, was absolutely amazing. And that's what I wanted to mention too. So you in books two and three, you have mm -hmm. multiple points of view. Um, right. And so, you know, we're going into Paul and yeah. Philip, but all, I mean, all these other people, um, yeah. Cornelius, Cornelius is there again. He's fun. And He's a lot of fun to write. And it's so amazing because you read these names in the Bible and mm -hmm. they're just, they don't have personality, you know, but then to read them in fiction, this personality starts coming up. You're like, oh, wow, I could really see why he would say that or he would do that. And it just brings yeah. it to life. So talk mm -hmm. about like why you pick those certain point of view characters, which again, it makes me, as I'm reading also, it makes me realize like, they knew each other. Of course, some of them, of course, we knew, knew each other, but sure. even more people knew each other, were sending letters, interacting. So talk about that dynamic of the point of view characters and why you pick them. Yeah, well, I loved Paul because of his story and, and because mm -hmm. he's the author of many of the books of the New Testament. And, and, and it was just fascinating to try and get into his head and study all of his writings again. And I took copious notes on everything he wrote mm -hmm. that we have. And he wrote far more than that. Right. We don't have, but what we have, I took copious notes on that. And then Cornelius was, of course, a really interesting character for a lot of people. He's Roman centurion, uh, well-respected, probably very highly placed in Roman society. And he became the first Gentile, not just him, his whole household, everybody was baptized. And then I, I got- And I just got goosebumps, like just you talking about that again. <laughs> I was just yeah. like, it gives yeah. me goosebumps, think about that. 
<laughs> his entire family. And then I, I loved thinking about people like Joanna mm -hmm. and uh, Mary Magdalene. And in, in, in book one, you get to meet Mary, the mother of Jesus, who was yeah. intimately involved in the workings of the church and in the missionary work and in you know, how, how the church was growing. Um, and it would be it would be absolutely fascinating when someday we discover. I'm sure I'm sure they're out there somewhere. They've not all been destroyed, because we're finding new things every day. I would love to see some writings from people like Mary, mm -hmm. because surely she wrote letters too to the saints to encourage them. And what a treasure that would be to have her writings, right? Or Mary Magdalene's, or some of the others, right? Right. So, so that was a lot of fun. And then in book three, we bring in Philip and, and, and in book two, we saw Peter. Mm -hmm. um, and there's going to be a spinoff that will involve another apostle mm -hmm. and one of the children of Barabbas. And so book three was fun too, because you got to get into the lives of the children more. Exactly. Who are, who and they're growing up yeah. Yeah. and they're starting families of their own and they're, and they're participating in the life of the church and the building of the kingdom, right? And that's a lot of fun. And so one of the daughters is going to be part of a spinoff. And the other daughter is going to be going to have something related to another spinoff. So I've been thinking about all these things. Lots of crazy ideas going through my head right now. Some of them not so crazy. Some of them are actually <laughs> them, so. Well, there's so much you could do with it. And it's just once you're in their minds and in their lives, you realize like traveling is not easy. Like, I don't know. We just like he went here. She went there. Like you just read it in the Bible and it like takes yeah. you half a second to read through it and then you were like this was a lot of hard work yeah. um i won't give too much away but there's like just dealing with death and different things it's like yeah. all the emotions are there and it helps you so much so then when you go back to the bible you're mm -hmm. like okay i love these people uh, one part of paul's that really just like endeared me to him is when it was talking about nero who we all know bad bad stuff about nero and yeah. from paul's point of view character He's like, oh, I love that young man. And he, I just like paused when I read that. And I'm like, oh, okay. I, I mean, his heart, like he was the sure. sinner that was going against Christians. <laughs> and then you just realize like, I can totally see that. So it's fun that you were able to explore mm -hmm. some of those areas and give some of the personalities and talk about, you know, the Holy Spirit is at work very clearly in their lives. And then you can yeah. see that, like how yeah. they act and react, which was partly convicting to me. I'm like, oh, wow, they're really forgiving. <laughs> or they're really, they're really thankful for this hardship. Or it makes me think of, I just oh, yeah. have it way too easy. Well, I learned a lot bringing Nero into the story. Mm -hmm. And Nero is one, I don't think he ever wanted to be emperor. And his mother made that happen. And uh, he, he wanted to be an actor. He was a thespian. Yeah. That's what he wanted to do. And then you can see that in the way he... Yeah. You know, announces things and yeah, yeah. yeah. And, oh, and when you hear the the narrator for book three uh, that did the audio book, he does <laughs> he does a voice for Emperor Nero. It's amazing. I loved it. So anyway, uh, Nero was was really interesting because he probably started out much different than he ended up, mm -hmm. and that's probably true for a lot of emperors. It's true mm -hmm. for presidents of the United States. It's it's true right. for lots of people in positions of power. Right? They start out one way, they end up another. And Nero did some really bad things very clearly, but Paul loved him and, and Christ loved him. Mm -hmm. And of course, in book three, Nero dies. I don't, I don't feel bad giving that away because two of the major events that we deal with in book three uh, that, that we don't know much about is one, the year of four emperors. So mm -hmm. Nero dies and then you have Otho and then you have Galba and then you have Vitellius and then you have Vespasian. And finally, Vespasian comes out on top. Within one year, you had four emperors and it was bloody battles. Mm. It was like the United States and, and we have different people rising up and fighting yeah. each other until at the end, one of them is, is left standing. That's what it was. They were killing mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. And they did that in one year, uh, four emperors, uh, which had never, never happened and, and didn't happen since and uh, or after that. And then the other one is the siege of Jerusalem. And mm. what a horrific event that was. And I didn't know a ton about it before I got into the research, but they figure there were between 600,000 and a million people inside the city and 90% probably died. Yeah. 90% of starvation or, you know, violence. And that effectively ended the Jewish state until 1948. Mm -hmm. They had no more country anymore after that. Right. It was it was done. And of course you had Jews all, you know, scattered around the Roman empire, but the Jewish state was done and, and Christ had prophesied it. And the Lord had given 
the people of Jerusalem, the leaders had given them every opportunity to repent and they refused. Yeah. And, and the natural consequences follow. And that's a, good, that's a good lesson for our own lives. The Lord is very patient, but at some point he won't hold back the consequences in mm -hmm. part because sometimes we need the consequences. Right. And it, uh, you see through the hardship, it even talks about that. And one of the characters can't remember um, that their hardship has drawn them closer to God um, through the hardship. And I think today, yeah, like absolutely. that should be our example too. <laughs> like we should, should be leaning into God more and more through whatever difficulty and, we and face. And we should learn from some of our elders. I just finished a book by Rod Dreher called Live Not By Lies. And I, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it, talking mm. to you. I just literally finished it yesterday. And he interviewed very old survivors of communist regimes who had been thrown into prison for their faith. Wow. And their faith grew in prison. And they they evangelized in prison. They helped other people in prison. And, and some of their testimonies are just amazing. Okay, they I'm putting on my glasses because I'm going to write this down. What's the name of that? Because <laughs> It's called, yeah, it's called Live Not By Lies. Okay. It, it reminds, I love, also love um, anything by Corey Tim Boone. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. yeah. So good. And, yeah. and it's, uh, yeah, the author is Rob Dreher. And he took that title from something that uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn wrote in the uh, Gulag Archipelago. That was, I think, near the end of, of okay. the Gulag Archipelago, Live Not By Lies. And what an amazing book. But but we need to to look to the examples of some of our elders who have passed through those mm -hmm. sufferings, who have courageously stood for truth and for the Savior. He talks about some of the executions where they would take priests out in, in, in Russia and they would line them up and they would say, uh, deny that God exists. Yeah. And, and, and there was one guy he interviewed who witnessed about 40 of them being executed that way. And not mm -hmm. one of those priests denied God and all of them were shot. Wow. Yeah. Really horrific, yeah. horrific things. But some really brave people who re are receiving a, a just reward in the next life. That's right. And then, yeah, and that's another thing too. Um, I think that was such a neat element of it is that now they're on the other side helping with the Lord's work. You know, it's just like, oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that. Okay, so Brenda said, um, I love the Barabbas trilogy, especially the Barabbas Legacy, one of my favorite series. Please write more soon. Well, Mike Honestly, said he's going to be writing, <laughs> writing more soon. So Brenda's going to be looking for them. Um, yes, yes. When can they expect more soon? Are <laughs> you talking about... So I'm not actively working on the spinoffs yet. Okay. I do have a couple of them planned. I don't have them on the calendar yet, uh, but there will be at least two spinoffs to the Barabbas okay. series. Uh, but I've got another uh, Christian fiction series. Uh, well, it might be a series. It's a book. There's one called The Servant of Helaman. I've already got the cover for it. I've got it with a publisher. They're looking at it. Uh, we'll see where that one goes. And then I'm working on sci-fi again. So the sequel to that sci-fi novel called Patriot Star will come out this year. It's it's oh, about awesome. seven seven hundred pages long. The first one was eight hundred pages. These are long. <laughs> I even, okay, so my sons, uh, they're what thirty two. My, old, my oldest sons. I have a little eleven year old too, but yeah, my yeah. thirty two year old and my almost twenty eight year old, they yeah. read these books like they'll yeah. love yours. I need to get yeah. Brandon they, Sanderson. You know, do they read? Do, do they read Brandon, Brandon Sanderson? Sanderson oh, yes. Yeah. Did you see and his the, Kickstarter campaign? Is it like thirty million or something now? Oh, it's just crazy. Within a day, <laughs> within a day, it was twenty million dollars for four books he hadn't even published yet. Yeah, absolutely. Plus, yeah, plus a bunch of swag that he'll send you if you want to pay. I, I went on the site; you could pay up to five hundred or six hundred dollars. They were talking about that yesterday. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was amazing. And to be able so, to get all the swag to go yeah. with it. So, so you when Those you are... say eight hundred pages and seven hundred pages, like I, yeah. this is my length. This is what I do. <laughs> Right that was about 350. Yeah. 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 And and then audiobooks even better because I could just full yeah. laundry and all this stuff. Yeah. But I'm telling you, my sons, and they're they both have jobs. One of them has a wife and kids. They read these epic, epic books and explore all yeah. these different characters. I mean, does mm. I don't even know how many points of view in the that Will of Time series. It was like 200 points of view or something. Oh, like was it 200? Was saying, it was my son was saying it was a lot. And I loved the Wheel of Time. Wheel of Time was a fantastic series of books to read. So I love that, um, you know, I think sometimes in the Christian fiction bubble, mm 
we get like this is we just you know historical fiction or this type of fiction yeah. the more i read outside science fic, christian science fiction or yeah. more biblical fiction like there's so many good books out there i've just yeah. been really enjoying especially in the last year interviewing people talking to people reading their books i've yeah. been greatly enjoying just my my um field expanding of all the all the wonderful books that i'm reading so it's been well, great. well patriot star has a very strong religious bent to it mm -hmm. it's a very clean book uh so i think they would really like patriot star and then the sequel is going to be called kindred star and I, I can't tell you the link but you'll you, they will appreciate the link they'll see it at the, <laughs> end of, at the end of book one they'll see what that link is and that link will bring you a lot oh. closer to christianity and then the I fantasy agree. one I'm going to start this year will also link to, to Christianity, but in a different way, uh, because you know it will be fantasy in one place, but also with a with a bridge that links it to Earth, mm -hmm. and that involves and you've written some books on World War II that involves yeah. a unit of the German army. Ooh. Much, of the, much of the German army hated Hitler, by the way. They thought yeah. he was an act, absolute creep, which he was. He was a really yeah. strange guy too. Um, but it will involve a, a unit of the German army that somehow passes through this portal and enters this other world. And okay, then that sounds gets reopened. <laughs> and, and, and so you're going to see these, these German army units, right? So, um, so that'll be fun. And they were Christians. And, and the, these were people that most of Germany was Christian. Mm -hmm. So I read, I read the biography. I, I was mentioning this to you earlier, the biography of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, mm -hmm. who was another one of these incredibly brave people. And he stood up against Hitler and he joined the resistance. He ended up being executed two weeks before he would have been freed yeah. by allied forces. Um, yeah. Really fascinating stuff. So that'll be a lot of fun, that fantasy book. Absolutely. Oh, so, and I love, okay. So how do you go from writing biblical fiction to sci-fi to fantasy? Does your mind just compartmentalize? Well, like, well uh, to a degree, to a degree. I, I love them all. And so mm -hmm. it, it's pretty easy to go from one to the next. And and uh, my imagination goes there. It's, I, I, I really enjoy it. And I'm going to do a Christmas story this year too. I've never done a Christmas story. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do something else I haven't done. I'm going to do a companion book to the first Barabbas book, like a study guide. Oh, yeah. So kind of like The Chosen has done with theirs, right? Season one has a study guide. Season two now has a study guide. We'll do that for the Barabbas books as well. And those are useful to me. Those are actually just fun mm -hmm. to do. And I, I learn more from them. So, so we'll do that as well. Those will be very long. Because you see these people pop up and these characters. Yeah. And you're mm -hmm. like, okay, I really want to stop reading this novel right now to go and like get to my Bible. But I want to keep reading. So I'll do that yeah. later. So yeah. the study guide, <laughs> the companion guide will be very helpful. And I think, and I loved even during my morning quiet time, like sure, the, sure, because the story's in your mind to be able to go yeah. to your Bible and mm -hmm. go back. So I think that'll be great. Do you know when those are going to be released? Your, um, yeah, companion I plan guide? on doing the first one this year. Okay, yeah, so I, I plan on having the first one done this year, and then the the other two will come next year. All right. Okay. So I think you've written because you were writing this the last time we talked. Was there anything that surprised you? In the I middle? wasn't writing that at all the last time we talked. You hadn't even started. No, Are you that, serious? that literally happened between the time we talked and December. Okay, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> faster, faster than I thought. And while I was working on some other things and I still work part-time in my first career. So, oh my uh, so I'm still doing all of that. So I work a so lot of- There's a lot of jealous writers out there, I will just say. <laughs> yeah, I, so, some of it has really come together. It's It's mm -hmm. been a lot of fun. So I love it. And and I brought in some, some other colorful characters like Josephus. Yeah. We actually meet Josephus in book three. And we meet, uh, there was another fun one. Uh, what is his name? Um, Apollonius of Tyana, I think is his name. And he was a Greek Pythagorean from Cappadocia. Yeah. And just some weird guy. And he, he went crossways with the emperors in, in, in some circumstances, as far as we know in history. And he was a fun character to throw in there on their way to Armenia. See, so. I think all of these, though, you used to pull them out more. And you do something with each one of them, which would be fun. Kristen said that's amazing because she's uh, that you were able to write that that quickly. <laughs> yeah, I was that's amazed awesome. too. I, I really thought it would take a year, but uh, so, it went faster. So I was going to ask you if anything surprised you about it, but basically the fact that uh, you wrote it that quickly was surprising. Well, I'll give you, and I had some help. I had a great editor who helped me and, and um, 
you know, a couple of other people that I bounced ideas off of. And then there was one interesting thing. I, you know, I, I'm dealing with the siege of Jerusalem and I've got Barabbas going all these places and his family going all these places. And, and I got to that point and I was like, how does Barabbas witness the mm. siege of Jerusalem? I, I couldn't figure out how to best weave that in. And then it came to me just boom, out of kind of out of the clear blue sky. He doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. There's another person that witnesses it that then relates it to him through another member of his family. And you'll see what that connection is. I'm not going to give that one away, but yeah, that's a fun connection that actually brings in a little bit of romance into the book. And I'm not a romance writer by any stretch, but, but that, that was kind of a fun one to, to deal with. I don't know. Next time we talk, you might be like, well, I wrote this romance and <laughs> in like three weeks. Right. Try something Here else new, right? <laughs> yeah. A Western. I'll do a Western too. A so. Western romance. Uh, yeah, I, I used that. to read quite a few Westerns. I used to read a lot of spy novels as well. Like uh, what was that? Robert Ludlum. Okay. I used to read all Robert Ludlum's books. I love one of my favorite spy ones is um, the Spy War Red. It was. Uh, oh man, what was okay. the Spy War Red? She was a model. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, it was great. All right, so we got we talked about Barabbas. Okay, I want to hold them up again. Um, so I was called Barabbas. Then these covers are just amazing. So we talked about that cover. This one yeah. is so good. Yep. And then look at this. That cover is so amazing. And so the same person did all three, I assume. The same person did all three. And remember the fun story I, I shared last time about the cover for book two and the photographer in Germany yeah. mm -hmm. and how he found out somehow through Google that his photo had been used. Well, he took the photo for book three as well. Oh, that's so cool. So he contacted me again and I sent him book three and then he sent me, he had sent me a postcard back after I sent him book two. He sent me a card after I sent him book three and it's a fun card of like a little, I don't know what it is, a, a little, Maybe I'll maybe I'll hold it up in front of the screen. I've got it. I was going to ask you if you have your sci-fi book there too nearby. Um, I do. I'll show you that as well. So here's. <laughs> yes, yeah, a little. And it's a 3D card, so it's a, oh, a wow. three-dimensional little whatever that whatever that is. A little hedgehog. Word. Hedgehog. A hedgehog. Which, that's what. It is. Which uh, my daughter lives in the Czech Republic, which is near Germany. Yeah. You said Germany, yeah. right? So they they're Germany, yeah. they, so here's the, they run here's wild. The yeah, they run wild there. Ah, okay. And then he sent me this little note. Uh, you know, thank you so much for the for the oh, book. Oh, I love it. I love it. So similar to what he had done before. Yeah. Uh, so that was fun to get that from him. And I, I just got that a few days ago. Oh, cool. And then here's Patriot Star. So that's what Patriot Star looks oh, like. Oh, that's a great cover too. And this is a different designer who did this cover because this, this was from quite a while back. But I've engaged the same designer who did the covers for the Barabbas books to do the, the cover for the sequel. So I've already gotten on his schedule uh, to get that one done, get that one ready. Because I'm already uh, a third of the way through draft three. Oh, wow. Okay. Of that sci-fi book. So I think I dropped a book. That's all right. Kristen said, I need to get Patriot Star. So, yeah, very good. All the things. They'll keep us busy. And All Kindle, right. So, yeah, Patriot Star is, is uh, Kindle Unlimited. The others aren't. Oh, good. Patriot okay. Star is. Okay. And then you mentioned audiobooks. So, yes. which ones are in audiobooks? The Barabbas books. All three of the Barabbas okay. books are audiobooks, and and it's with three different narrators. Oh, really? So I liked all three. So I liked the first one. I liked the second one, and then the third one blew me away. Oh, absolutely wow. blew me. And he's an actor, and. Mm. Uh, Sometimes I actually felt I actually wanted to turn my head and look at the movie screen. <laughs> That's so cool. Because right? I almost felt like I was in a movie. Well, now I want to go listen to them because I love <laughs> audiobooks. That's there are awesome. a couple of samples. So you can see a couple of samples on my website of okay. his audio rendition. Is book three audio already out or are we waiting it is for through, it? It is through some outlets, but not okay. audible yet. Okay. So I, I, I distributed it through Find Away Voices. Mm-hmm. And so you can see it on Kobo and Scribd and Nook and Google Play. And then ACX just takes longer. So Yeah, it does. They're backlog, I think. There. It'll yeah. get there. Yeah, very cool. But I did well, put I... the samples out there on the website. So Well, you know, Barabbas ages through the book. So maybe the narrator mm -hmm. just aged. <laughs> yep. Bra Barabbas ages. The church is maturing. That's interesting yeah. to think about. 
And, and, and between 65 and 75 AD, this is interesting to think about too. You were talking earlier about how, you know, you, you, you feel like, you know, you're living in that time of the right. saints. Well, within about a 10 year span, they lost half of the apostles mm. half. Mm -hmm. from about 65 to 75, as far as we know. Yeah. About how can you imagine that? So you have these 12 apostles who are leading the church, along with sisters who are, who are helping lead the church as well. It wasn't just the men. Right. Um, and, and then half of the apostles within about a 10-year time frame are, are gone. Mostly. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Now, they were trying to replace them like they replaced Judas, right? And so we know that Paul became an apostle. And, um, you know, there's lots of others that, that they say probably became apostles. Uh, and then at some point, the apostles just went away completely because of the persecution. But... Um, that would have been an amazing time frame to live through it. And this is the other point I bring out in the book. Uh, we think a lot nowadays about the second coming. Right. And right. We, we pray for the second coming. I, I would love for the second coming to happen today or tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Right. I would love for that to happen. Um, but we don't know. We don't know when it's going to happen. And the world is on fire. But if you look back at that time frame in book three there, the world was on fire. The year exactly. of the, Wars, yeah, the siege yeah. of Jerusalem, all the apostles getting killed. Uh, the, the saints must have thought, well, the world's on fire. It's going to happen any time. It's coming yeah. to pass. Is the Lord coming? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Is the second coming here? And, and then they would have had a choice to make, right? You can either take your foot off the gas and say, well, he must be coming soon so I can relax. Or you work harder. And you, you keep trying to bring his, his coming forward. And, and that's what we should be doing. We should be working har harder to make sure that, that we're ready for his coming so that he can come. Uh, and eventually he will. But we need to work harder instead of, you know, relaxing. And pass the, the legacy on, which I love the title, The Barabbas Legacy. And you mentioned it's, you know, his children's point of view comes into play because they're yeah. the ones that carry on. The children are carrying, you know, so our children are going to mm -hmm. be one carrying everything on too. So it's just an encouragement. As I was reading, um, it just encourages me to remember like, okay, this yeah. is, I have a legacy. You yeah. have a legacy. Each of us have a legacy to pass on our oh, yeah. faith. So, cause it doesn't matter when we live, mm -hmm. there's going to be persecution. There's going to be hardship. There's cause it, the Bible tells us there's going to be, but Absolutely. are they going to draw near to God? Are they continue to draw people to God? Yeah. Um, are they going to impact the world instead of just hiding away from the world? So, I love it. Yeah. yeah. And I had a great friend help me with the title. I, I had come up with kind of a lame title and <laughs> we ended up with legacy, which is awesome. It. Love it. Yeah. Great. Okay. So I always ask this question as we're nearing the end, yep. what Christian fiction have you been reading and enjoying lately? Well, I, I, I told you, I read recently your book called night song mm -hmm. and I love world war II stuff. Um, and I've, I've read a lot of World War II books. And, and of course, um, the Rod Dreher stuff is post-World War II, but you know Dietrich Bonhoeffer's World War II. And, and so I, I'm really interested in that time frame and, yeah. and, and what happened. And, and you, you brought out a wonderful story there that had to do oh, with concentration you. camps and, and all that <laughs> evil, all that evil that was happening. Yeah. It was a beautiful story um, and how people you know, overcame that evil. Mm -hmm. And then the other one I read that was a fun one, and you had interviewed, uh, uh, Mr. Hannibal, what's James Hannibal, right? James Hannibal, yeah. Uh, Wolf Soldier. Yes. So that was kind of a fun YA sort of, of novel. And I like some of the YA stuff that's out there. I really do. And that was a fun one to read. So now I need to read book two. Um, I'm having a hard time finding enough time to read. That is hard. <laughs> of all the things I'm trying to work on. So, um, but I do enjoy, you know, taking some time, especially on Sundays and just reading. So. Yeah. And the good, that's what I love about being able to, or interviewing people. It's like, whoop. I'm going to have to sit down and just read this book because you know, <laughs> it's important. I got to do it. So, yeah. oh, Kristen asks, um, are you going to write any World War II books? And you mentioned there might be a World War II tie in to your sci fi. Was it sci fi? The fantasy book. Yeah. The fantasy, the fantasy book. book. Okay. So, um, that one won't directly deal with World War II. It'll bring in an element from it, but it mm. won't directly deal with it. So, I have not thought about writing a World War II book yet. I know there's a ton of, of World War II fiction out there. Um, I might someday, but I haven't I haven't gotten an idea to do that yet. Maybe by the or, end of the year prompt. you will. <laughs> maybe, maybe I just got my prompt. I don't know. So Yeah, exactly. Oh, I love it. All right. Well, um, for those interested in reading your books and finding more about 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold them all up again about this series. Where can they go to get more information? So you can go to my website. Uh, it's mdhouselive.com. And, and you can remember his name, just like House MD. The I, I am literally Factor. House MD. Those are my initials. So <laughs> I'm House MD. I'm just not the cranky TV doctor type. Yeah. So yeah, mdhouselive.com. And like I said, I've got some samples out there and, and these interviews I'll put up there and those sorts of things. So I'm Perfect. trying to get better at that. I'm trying to get better at, at, at running the website and making it a little more interesting. So and that's the hard part because we have the creative writing part, but then there's yeah. like website and interviews yeah. and yeah. all, all, that, yeah. all well, that other stuff. If you're Brandon Sanderson, you hire lots of people to do that. But I think I, he has like not, 30 employees. Yeah. yeah, he's like 30 employees. I could do a lot if I had 30 employees. Yeah. <laughs> and he's very um, prolific. He's naturally prolific. Right. But he's more prolific now that he has so much help. Right. So yeah. I just need an employee just to do my laundry. That would be great. <laughs> I literally have a basket of laundry sitting right here to be folded right next yeah. to me. Yeah. Well, we so. have a lot. You have a, quite a few people in the house, right? We so. do. We have five kids still at home me and my husband yeah. and my grandma. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's fun, and I still get to read, and so can listen to audio books well, and, I, and, and talk I love to amazing some authors. Of your posts about your, yeah, I love seeing some of your posts about your family and the things you're doing, and and that's great. And your homeschooling stuff. And I mean, homeschooling. homeschooling is becoming such an important thing for a lot of people. Absolutely. Uh, and and just really necessary because um, one of the things you'll find if you read that uh, Rod Dreher book is is we're not dealing with the hard totalitarianism that these people dealt mm -hmm. with but there's an even perhaps even more pernicious soft totalitarianism attacking the church yeah. not just our social structures but attacking the church mm -hmm. and 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 he's giving us a lot of good tools to push back on that soft totalitarianism okay i've already wrote it down so. i have it <laughs> All right. Well, Mike, thank you so much for being here. It's always a joy talking to you. Um, and I can't wait to you read as well. what else you come up with. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. You too.